What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Redemption with Jaden. Today, we've got another game for you, another deck, new deck. Um, it's not a super, like, competitive deck by any means, um, but it is kind of fun. Uh, I don't think this version is necessarily optimized. I really didn't have a whole lot of time to put into testing and um, editing this deck, but I think that it's pretty fun, and... Who knows, maybe I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it around and, you know, maybe play with it at some point. Um, but as you can see, we're using a Legion of Angels, and actually we've got three of them in the deck. So we've got two in the deck here, and one in the reserve. Um, and this was, I mean, you could probably get away with one in the deck and one in reserve. Um, that might be, you know, better that way, but... I thought that, you know, for the fun of it, it would be kind of sweet to, you know, use all three because you can, um, if you're not sure why you can have three of these in a type one deck, uh, it is because it is a meek character or enhancement, um, meek characters and enhancements, uh, you can have up to three of in a type one deck, um, might apply it to some other card types too, but I don't think there are any others that matter that I can think of, so um, we'll leave that there. Sites, you can have uh, as many as you want, like you can have seven Samaria sites or something. Um, so Meek sites, yeah, they don't, they don't count. Um, so yeah, uses Legion of Angels, which is a Meek hero, and then Mary Faithful Servant who, uh, his territory class says, while you do not control a good enhancement in battle, protect your meek heroes from harm. So, the idea is to get these big, beefy 12-12 meek angels into battle, and then have Mary sit back and protect them from harm. Uh, and then we've got, you know, Josiah's Covenant to protect my Mary. Same with Noah's Ark, protect Mary. Um, and then we've got, let's see, um... You know, lots of stuff to protect lost souls, because if our uh, meek heroes are protected from harm, then the easiest blocks are just going to be, you know, chump blocks and, um, like, Uzza and Firefoxes and, you know, protecting lost souls or shuffling lost souls or something. So we've got the Orphan's Lost Soul going here. Um, originally, I did have Miraculous Handkerchiefs in here, but I kind of thought that that would be uh, a little overkill, um... Not necessarily needed. I uh, included Guardian in here because um, that you know deals with uh, like muscle shufflers and that kind of stuff. I um, thought there was something else that protected lost souls too, but um, uh, that might be it. It might have just been miraculous handkerchiefs that I had in here. Um, I kind of figured that it wasn't going to be super necessary, but uh, it, more testing would would tell, I guess. Um, let's see. The so the idea with Mary, I guess, um, or the unfortunate part is that she can be negated. So uh, we do have to plan around that and kind of the the whole uh, plan here. If you look at all of these enhancements we got here, we've got four of these, you know, basically searching enhancements, uh, that go to get the other stuff to set up, um, or I guess five, you include fifth seal, to get both joy and love. And then we also have hope, which can search for, uh, joy, anyway. Um, so we get joy and love out of the deck. Uh, we use, um, love to convert Mary and, um, you know, convert her to probably white, could do clay, but doesn't, um, I think white is probably better, because, you know, then she can use Consider the Lilies, and she can also use First Fruits, which is important, uh, for reasons I will explain in, in a second here, um, but then you place, uh, Joy on your Mary to make her ability cannot be negated, so cannot be negated protection from harm on your 12-12 hero, seems pretty good, um, but the only problem is that in order for Mary to actually become cannot be negated with Joy, uh, she has to reactivate, which can only only happens when she enters territory or enters battle. Um, so basically, she would either have to 
uh, or I would have to place the enhancements on her and then attack and then have her come back from from battle so that she well I mean so attack or she can attack her ability at that point is cannot be negated but then she has to you know survive come back to the territory and and sit there and then be cannot be negated uh, which you know can be dangerous I really don't want to have to be wasting an attack with Mary uh, because, as you can see, we don't really have any battle winners for her, except for, you know, maybe Root of Jesse. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, not going to be great, which is why I included First Fruits in the deck, because it um, makes it a lot easier, uh, instead of having to attack with Mary, you can just set her aside for one turn, and then on the next turn she comes back, um, and then since she re-enters territory, she becomes cannot be negated. So I put first fruits in here. Um, I think maybe the Sabbath would probably also be worth it, even though you're not actually going to be playing and you cannot be negated enhancements. Um, but basically, just having that one turn set aside uh, and come back, I think, is you know key for for getting married uh, cannot be negated. But you definitely want to make sure that you. Don't do that until you have like Josiah's Covenant active uh, or Noah's Ark out. Because if your Mary is not protected, then you know anything that takes her out will just put all your work uh, or make all your your work in vain. Um, so yeah, that uh, definitely is a little you know tricky there to get uh, take some planning. Um, the rest of the offense, I mean, so. You saw all the enhancements are going to just to set it up. David, he's sort of in there to set it up. He's also um, the hero for a soldier's prayer. He's the only hero for a soldier's prayer, which, like I said, it's not really optimized. Uh, I guess, you know, Naaman <laughs> maybe could be considered a hero for a soldier's prayer um, if, when he dies. Um, or, I mean, I guess any of these guys converted, but... Uh, that would only be happening with love, most likely, or my opponents convert, and uh, don't really want to waste love on my evil characters. Um, so yeah, David, uh, he helps get set up, and then also you know, a soldier's prayer to get even more set up. Obed is in there to, um, I mean, mostly just because negating opponents neutral cards is, like, super good. Um, I think it's better than, than most people think. Uh, it's like, um, you, you're playing against someone who's negating your neutral cards, and that's when you realize, like, wow, that's super good. <laughs> um, but, like, lost soul abilities, artifacts, um, even, you know, sights and stuff, that's... Negating all of those is pretty brutal. Um, so, yeah, I really like Obed in this deck. Um, Jotham was actually... Oh, he's, he's also in there for a Soldier's Prayer. What am I talking about? I wouldn't build a deck with only one a soldier pair target, <laughs> right? Yeah, no. Uh, so we also have Jotham in here because of yeah, for sure a soldier's prayer, uh, and then also I guess yeah, Solomon's dream too. Um, yeah, that can that can also be Obed or Joseph if I need to. Um, but uh, he you can convert him to Meek to take a good card from reserve, and then he can ban to a Meek hero cannot be negated. So. You convert him to Meek and he's only a 4-3, which, you know, isn't great, but, I mean, that's a 4-3 banning to your 12-12, and, you know, 16-15, protected from harm, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I figured, like, any, you know, numbers adding in there would probably help, and then Oath of Purity is in reserve to bounce him every turn. Um, and then Joseph, he was, uh... Or he's he's also you know pretty sweet. If I happen to not uh, draw or you know get to one of my three legion of angels, um, then I've got Joseph here to exchange with one of them and then make them a twenty-two twenty-two. And when they're protected from harm, that's also pretty sweet. Um, to kind of just make um, I guess Colosseum was in there also to kind of help with the chump blocks, um, but to make it sort of a you know, Voltron style deck, which is really what it breaks down to, is just like Legion of Angels, Voltron kind of not really buffing the Legion of Angels necessarily, um, but just kind of 
I mean, protecting them and then having all the uh, you know, outside cards kind of buffing them indirectly um, by just limiting your opponent's options. So Colosseum is there for that. Windows and Arrow Light is there for that. Um, I guess that's, you know, kind of a reason to have all three legions in the deck. Um, because you need three or more meek heroes in order for Windows and Air Light to be active, uh, which is, I don't know, maybe not worth it because uh, it's not very fast to set up. Like if you draw it in the early game, then it's just kind of a dead card, uh, which isn't great, but I mean, like I said, this is more of a fun deck. So it's not necessarily about optimizing every single card. Um, and like this is really good uh, if you. Uh, are able to, uh, you know, get the whole set up with Mary cannot be negated and uh, Legion of Angels um, in battle, or in, and three or more meek heroes. Um, the only problem is that, you know, uh, if your Mary is not set up to be cannot be negated, which actually is pretty decent as well, like, I was actually thinking about just taking out the joy and love combo and just focusing on um, you know, keeping Mary around and maybe answering some of the negate cards like Distressed and Woes and, and all of that, um, just to make sure that Mary is active and, um, but yeah, there's, uh, like I was saying, you gotta be careful if Mary is not, cannot be negated, then Windows of Narrow Light would negate her ability, so not, not quite as good there. Uh, Matthew's Begats, though, that one's definitely pretty good, um, because if they do happen to have something like, regardless of protection or whatever, they take out one legion, you just add another one to battle. It's, uh, it's that simple, and it's very easy to do. Um, so, on the defense, you can see I went with a Syrian defense. Uh, it was partially because I just wanted to try it out, and partially because gold shield is another option for converting your Mary to white or clay, um, or basically just to white. Um, and I'm not super sold on it. Uh, I don't think that Syrians are necessarily that good against like the super um, meta decks like you know, Throne, and uh, as you may or may not see later. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I do think that it is kind of fun. I mean, this Captain of the Chariots, King Resin combo is pretty sweet. Um, if you don't know, if you haven't seen that, I think it's been on the channel before in someone else's deck. Um, but basically, King Resin plays Damascus from Reserve. Damascus searches deck or discard pile for a Gray Syrian, so you can search for Captain of the Chariots. Then you can ban the Cap Captain of the Chariots, equip an evil weapon from Reserve, so you can equip Naaman's Chariot and Horses to your King Resin, and then you can... Uh, draw to play an enhancement, and you can play like Night Raid or Arrest in Jerusalem, both of which uh, capture and are made cannot be negated by King Resin. Um, so that's pretty fun. Uh, I also thought it would be kind of cool to try out Shobak. Uh, he's not um, like he's he's never really been that great, even when he first came out. I don't think he was really used that much. Um, but you can use and hold weapons of any brigade, so if you do King Resin, uh, like, so, you know, first turn you just do King Resin, band Captain the Chariots, and you get Naaman's Chariot and Horses on King Resin, well next turn you can just do King Resin, uh, you get Naaman's Chariot and Horses, and this time you band to Shobak, and he can band to a generic Syrian, so you band to Captain of the Chariots, and then you equip foreign horses to your Shobak. Uh, because he can use and hold weapons of any brigade. Uh, so that's a that's a whopping draw six right there. Um, and you get to play two enhancements. Uh, so, I mean, I thought that that would be kind of cool. And I think in many circumstances that can, that can work and be good. Um, but I think that the defense definitely needs some tuning here. As you can see, I only have two evil enhancements in the deck. Uh, but I am running four Grey Curses, so Lacking Prophecy is a pretty good uh, battle winner. Unsuccessful is obviously a really good battle winner, and the battle is a stalemate, uh, so it cannot be interrupted and that kind of stuff. 
Um, Forbidden Marriage is is decent. Uh, I thought that it would be kind of cool to use on Naaman, just because you can you know, take out the hero in battle and a good card from their hand. Um, I think that's, you know, uh, both pretty good. Um, and then Birthing Pains, yeah, I mean, that was just like, yeah, it's another great curse, let's try it out. Um, and so then obviously Endless Treasures is in here to kind of get some more value from the curses. Um, but, you know, won't be afraid to use them as battle winners if the if the need arises. Um, but I think having more ways to deal with multiple heroes in battle is important. Um, as you can see, I, didn't in I did not include Christian Martyr because I was thinking that, you know, multiple heroes is kind of the meta. Uh, so I can get away without it. Um, that way I can include both Guardian, Falling Away, and Chronicles of the Kings, as those are kind of more of the, the flex dominance, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I think that that was um, uh, the, the definitely a change that I would make to the defense is adding some more things to hit multiple characters. Um, so, like, maybe even taking out Colosseum and having Scattered in here. Um, like, you can use both Scattered and Scattered Cheap. Um, that would probably be worthwhile. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the whole deck. Um, I'm not going to spend too much more time uh, because I've got to get into this game here. Um, but as you can see, the game didn't last super long. Uh, we're, I'm playing it again, third, second week in a row against uh, Brad Gaylord. Um, but he tried out a new deck uh, this week. It is a thrown deck. Um, so as a... <laughs> As I, I noticed that this defense may not have worked super well against Throne, and you can already kind of tell from the length of the video that it might not have been a super long and defensive game. Um, but uh, I do think that uh, we did get to see some of the, the, the deck stuff going on, and I thought that that was uh, kind of fun. And like I said before, I didn't have a whole lot of time to put into this deck this week and also for making the video, so, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get what we get and see what, uh, see how, you know, this deck does, even against kind of the top level competitive deck. Um, let's see, yeah, the, uh, one thing I did want to mention, um, before getting into the video, kind of a little announcement sort of thing, I don't know, uh, the tournament happening this Saturday online, so if you're watching this video, that means you can probably play in the tournament, uh, you do have to have physical cards, um, but, and, and some, like, camera set up, because the games are played over Zoom, uh, but it would be really sweet to have more participation, I think we have, like, eight players so far, uh, in Type 1, 2 player, and then there's also LOC only being offered. Uh, I will be playing Type 1 2 player. Who knows? I might even play this deck. Probably not, but we'll see. Um, and yeah, so that's this coming Saturday. So if you're, you know, watching this video at any point from a few days after the release, then this doesn't really matter to you. So uh, we'll go and get into it. Unfortunately, during the game, my camera quit out, stopped working for some reason. Um, so I do have the audio, but I think it'll probably be cleaner and better if I just re-record kind of my commentary over the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically record myself watching the game and do the commentary from there. So it might not be quite as like flush and I don't know, in sync as usual. Um, so, sorry about that, but fortunately it was um, not too long of a game and, you know, pretty straightforward to, uh, it, it, sh it shouldn't be too bad. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the game. Alright, so we're getting into the game here. Uh, I'm just going to commentate like I would for a game that I didn't play in or just like from one that's 
happening after the fact just because trying to, you know, say exactly what I was thinking or, I mean, I remember for the most part, but it just makes it difficult. So, uh, Brad started off with an Exiles and a Hunter's Law, or Hunter Lost Soul, um, I started out with no Lost Souls, one star ability, Root of Jesse, um, uh, you know, no point in me using because there were no humans to bounce. Um, so, yeah, Brad just went ahead and used his Lost Souls. The Hunter lets him uh, exchange for a Lost Soul, in an OT Lost Soul in his deck, uh, and Exiles, um, all right, so he, he exchanged for the Remnant, and Exiles lets him uh, go grab an OT artifact uh, from his reserve, which is what he ends up doing. Uh, it's got some other options there, but um, yeah, so he takes Angel of the Winds with Remnant. Angel of the Winds, um, it's pr a pretty normal hero to get with Remnant, um, just because it can basically turn into any hero in your deck if you're playing humans. Uh, and then with Exiles, he grabbed Kenna with David. Um, so uh, pretty solid start there. Um, you know, he's starting with 10 cards in hand, and I'm starting with 8, which is kind of the um, you know, benefit of drawing more Lost Souls in the opening these days. Um, you know, I didn't draw any, which is, you know, like they say, no Lost Souls or is the, the best defense. Um, but with lots of Soul Gen and stuff, that might not be... Um, the, the case nowadays, because having, I guess, having lost souls makes for a better offense, so uh, Brad went ahead and put down his own guardian, which is unfortunate, because uh, we are using falling away in the deck um, and then he put down Angel of the Winds, and is playing Isaiah's Call, so this got me a little curious, like oh, is he actually playing like an Isaiah deck? Um, you know, probably not, but he said he was trying out a new deck and uh, wasn't sure how it would go. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, I, I suppose I could still be Isaiah Throne, which is you know, basically just the, the, the current throne. Um, but I was hoping it was something different, I guess. <laughs> um, and then he goes, goes ahead and plays the enhancement side of Covenant with David to search his deck for a fortress. Um, you can grab a, you can play a Sight or Good Fortress from deck or reserve Feast by David. So then the throne came out and I was like, okay, yep, well, that pretty much answers that there. Um, so I was kind of thinking, like, okay, maybe we'll be okay. I don't have any Lost Souls out, so um, you know, we, we, we can at least stall that way. Um, but and he activated Endless Treasures to go ahead and... Uh, activate his golden calf from his reserve, um, which is kind of a bummer, but uh, I did, or I do have Chronicles of the Kings in my hand at this point, so I uh, wasn't super worried about it. I could just take it out when I needed to. Um, I was mentioning that having to play it as good to take a golden calf would mean I can't play it as evil to take out Isaiah's Call, but I don't really care about taking out Isaiah's call if I can't take out Isaiah because Isaiah can just recur call pretty easily. So um, he goes ahead to make a rescue attempt with David, or I guess a battle challenge at this point, uh, with David Outcast Refuge, banding to an OT Red Warrior from hand reserve or territory, and he grabs Jehoshaphat from his reserve. Um, Jehoshaphat uh, bounces a hero, so he technically would have had to bounce his Isaiah at this point, or bounces a human in a territory, um, so, uh, but he doesn't end up banding to Isaiah anyway, and he does bounce him, I think, later on, so it's not, not a huge deal, he could have just played him back down and played call on him again, um, but what was a huge deal here is that he was able to ban to his captive priest, uh, which captures to your opponent's land of bondage, and you can add a priest from hand, deck, territory, or reserve to battle. So he goes ahead and adds Jeremiah Hopebringer, which is not great. Um, we'll realize that he uh, forgot to look at my hand a few times uh, with Jeremiah, this being the, the first of those times. 
Um, but that's not really the important part that he's trying to get from Jeremiah right here. He's just getting the toss the next evil enhancement played this battle. And so with only Captain of the Chariots and the Strong Force in my hand uh, as for blockers and only one evil enhancement, uh, I'm definitely not going to be able to um, block. I mean, I could go Captain of Chariots and equip my... Um, oh, actually, no, I couldn't do that, I remember, because uh, he exchanged with Angel of the Winds um, to David, and because he exchanged for a Cloud Hero, then Angel of the Winds is negating evil characters. So, couldn't even equip there, and even if I did, it would have been tossed right away. So, wouldn't have done anything except for get me a draw two, um, which, you know, probably would have maybe been helpful, but... Um, in the, in the long run, at least, not for that battle, for sure, but, um, so he passes the turn, I draw a Remnant Lost Soul, um, I decide to just go ahead and go to my reserve, uh, I think if I were, you know, playing, uh, competitively not trying to, um, you know, get the, the stuff going on in my deck, I would have taken one of his heroes there, um, probably as David, so I could just ban two, um, you know, his, his chain, actually, I, I don't remember if David says, I'm pretty sure he says A territory, so yeah, he can ban to your opponents, so I'm going to do David, Jehoshaphat, to either Jeremiah or Isaiah, um, but I kind of want to get my own stuff set up, so I take Mary from reserve, I go ahead and put windows down, face down, uh, because, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, it's kind of a dead card early on, because, you know, not going to have enough meek heroes to, um, to satisfy it, so um, kind of debating what I want to do here. Golden Calf is going to be negating my Mary and also my Hope, so I don't want to play Hope right away. Um, but I was thinking that if I, um, you know, I could either play Chronicles of the Kings beforehand to uh, get rid of his Golden Calf, or I can just um, put down Mary um, before I attack uh, with. Legion of Angels, and then because Chronicles of the Kings also negates uh, the the cards that it discards, then Mary would turn on as soon as I play it. Um, so I could just go out with Legion of Angels, and then play Chronicles of the Kings if he blocks to negate enhancements for the battle, and then also negate and discard Golden Calf. Um, so basically, I would just make him like waste an evil character. Um, you know, maybe not waste, but it would probably get him to to basically just throw away an evil character because he thought he would would have been able to block one way, but uh, wasn't able to. But unfortunately for him, or maybe fortunately at this point, uh, he did not have an evil character, so Legion of Angels just got to walk in for one, uh, which was nice. It saved me some resources, and I could save a little time. Uh, for a golden calf because I didn't really need to play anything else this turn. I didn't need to play hope to get joy uh, because I didn't have love for the convert. Um, so sitting at nine cards, deciding if I want to put down one of my evil characters or discard something. But uh, in a starting hand with three dominance, it's kind of hard to um, you know, find something that's worth throwing away or that you can you know, do without. So I do end up putting down one of my evil characters. Um, putting down the strong force. Uh, as you can see at this point, I do have you know, the strong force and Captain of the Chariots, which are both characters that work really well with um, uh, King Resin. So basically I'm just kind of waiting for King Resin to, to show up. Um, so yeah, Brad goes ahead here and uh, draws. He drew a Hopper Lossal, which is not great. Um, if uh, it was ruled semi recently um, that negating and rescuing um, the Hopper with Son of God shouldn't actually work the way that uh, some people thought it did. They thought that um, negating the Hopper because that sends it back to your opponent's territory uh, that you can target it for rescue with Son of God, uh, which I definitely would have done in this case, just because 
he's going super fast and generating lost souls um, and kind of my only hope is to to soul drought him for a little bit um but because that was found to not work exactly the way that we thought because the negate and the rescue target at the same time and the rescue cannot target a lost soul in your own land of uh your own land of bondage by game rule so that's uh the word on that i guess if i had three woes maybe i would have played it there so i could negate it and then play Senna God on it but or at least just negate it actually that, that probably would have been enough um but yeah he put down storehouse as well um which is good good protection and then he equips his david with jehu's sword uh, definitely a card that you don't see very often here and sorry I'm, I was looking at his other heroes for some reason I don't remember what I was saying um, but with the Jehu's sword uh, it's actually kind of a neat inclusion here um, discard an evil human any player may discard a card of matching brigade from territory or reserve instead so it doesn't seem like that great like the instead ability is sort of broad but with the kind of minimal amount of defense that people are playing these days um just being able to take out one of their evil characters in territory before even uh you know before they even have a chance to block is pretty good um and they have to either discard a card of matching brigade in territory so they can just discard one of their evil, other evil characters which is good um or reserve which you know might not have a whole lot uh, and if uh, if I was playing with Storehouse, then that would also protect my reserve, and I would have to take out one of my other evil characters. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Um, haven't seen a whole lot of play from the card, but yeah, maybe it's maybe it's worth trying out. Um, the the thing that I kind of wanted or have wanted to try out with Jehu's sword is uh, equipping it to Evil King Saul who lets you, um, he lets you, uh, either, or you get to draw, and then you can, I think, either band or toss the next evil enhancement in battle, so, uh, you just equip it to him, since it's got six, uh, strength on the evil side, then you just send out King Saul and you toss it right away for six, um, yeah, could be pretty neat, uh, and his abilities cannot be interrupted as well, so it's, um, you know, pretty tough to, to get around. Um, so as you can see, uh, he started off this rescue attempt with Ishmaya and then pretty much did the same band here. Ishmaya just lets him draw one and bans to an OT red. Uh, he discarded my strong force and banning to Jeremiah again. Um, not looking at my hand once again, um, but you know, I guess that's within the rules because it is a May. Um, I think I might have noticed after the first one um, but he didn't really, he didn't really need that part of the ability anyways. <laughs> he, I think he realized on the, the next turn. Um, and then, you know, for the other times I, I or the, like this turn, I don't think I even thought about it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I still just have the one evil enhancement. That's not going to do me a whole lot. I mean, Captain of the Chariots wasn't negated this time, so, um, Let's see, what was I looking for? Oh, I was looking to see if I had the Deceiver in the deck, because I was like, I really need to get to King Resin <laughs> um, to at least give me a chance here. Um, but he put down the Babylonian Merchants, and I was like, eh, yeah, I don't know if I have a chance. Uh, that it definitely makes it more challenging, because it really heavily punishes my searching, and I don't have any way to protect my Mary yet. Uh, if I had like a Noah's Ark or something, that would be great because it would protect my heroes, but unfortunately not. Um, the bright side, though, is that I did end up drawing into my King Resin, so that was pretty fortunate uh, because I also drew the Darkness Lost Soul and, uh, and uh, didn't want to have to search, so I opted not to search um, to make sure I could keep my Mary around. And... Yeah, none. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to attack here. Um, you know, I, uh, basically, like, I mean, I have some search options. Like, if I were to 
uh, play Chronicles to take out his Golden Calf. I can play Angel to take out his Babylonian Merchants, and then I can play Angelic Guidance and Hope uh, to grab Joy and Love. And um, then my goal would sort of be to that he only drew one uh, evil character on his turn because he you know, didn't have one last turn, and then I could attack with Mary and get her to be cannot be negated. Um, but it's definitely kind of risky there. Um, probably not worth it. So uh, before I do attack, uh, he does play Son of God to take out my Orphan's Lost Soul, which does not uh, inspire confidence in me at all. <laughs> Um, you know, knowing that he probably has a way to protect his lost souls or something like that. Um, but uh, he takes out the orphans, and then he also plays Second Coming to get his Son of God back. Um, I was <laughs> joking that I would like to have uh, a new beginning to play, because he didn't actually ask for a dominant initiative, but it was fine. Um, you know, most of the time it's probably okay to just go for it, um, but, or, I mean, it ends up being okay, but, in, you know, official games and everything, I, mean, I guess in most games you should still ask, um, it's because it's sort of normalized now, but yeah, I wish that I had had a, a new beginning and some flood survivors, but that was not the case. Um, so we have to see if we can, we can try to catch up here. Um, let's see, yeah, I think my my best option here would just be to um, yeah, make sure that I get the Lost Soul, which is what I think I end up doing. Um, it would be, I think it would have worked for me to, uh, or it would work if I had just gone out with Legion of Angels and then do the same kind of strategies last turn, just because... Um, there wouldn't be, there probably wouldn't be like as much cannot be, um, cannot be prevented stuff that he could play, um, that would not harm my Legion of Angels. So basically, I could just attack with Legion of Angels, and then play Chronicles of the Kings um, to negate enhancements, take out Golden Calves so that Mary's on, and protecting Legion. Um, but that does leave Mary kind of vulnerable, so um, definitely gotta think about that when you don't have like the Josiah's Covenant or the uh, Noah's Ark out. Um, so yeah, I think at this point I'm just waiting to uh, you know basically take care of the counters during the battle to get the most value, um, and then I can use my my search cards afterwards. Um, and I don't really need to take out or to play Root of Jesse before the battle anyway, um, because before he can play a dominant like Christian Martyr or something, I can just play Chronicles of the Kings to take out Golden Calf and turn on Mary. Um, so yeah, I do end up going out with Legion of Angels. He blocks with the Merchants, and I play Chronicles of the Kings to uh, as good to negate enhancements, uh, negate evil enhancements, and take out the Golden Calf. Um, so yeah, I think that, um, uh, yeah, and then I guess my, my thinking at this point was like, okay, he's already at three, he's got Son of God in his hand, um, or like if at any other point in the game or like if I, my defense was actually doing something, um, I think I wouldn't have played Angel of the Lord here and just kind of banked on um, you know, Legion of Angels getting the job done with uh, protection from Mary, but I just didn't really want to, you know, risk anything weird happening uh, because odds are he was probably going to win next turn anyway if I, you know, couldn't uh, scrounge up some sort of uh, block here. So uh, I was like, yep, just got to kind of secure the, the number two lost soul. And uh, now I'm trying to decide what I want to um, search for here uh, because Angelic Guidance, uh, because of Storehouse, it wasn't going to give me 
that much value. Uh, it lets me look at opponent's hand and search for a silver card, but he's got storehouse protecting his hand from opponents, so um, that's not great. Um, and then I think here I was pointing out that even if I were able to get Mary uh, cannot be negated with both uh, joy and love, then um, and like you know, get her in battle or back in territory, something like that. Um, then he could also he could just use his Jehoshaphat to bounce her and basically reset the cannot be negated uh, status because I would have to play love and joy again and then have to reactivate her again. Um, huge mess. And because it's on a hero, then it's not even harm. So Noah's Ark and Josiah's Covenant don't do anything about that. So that's kind of uh, kind of annoying. Um, sort of makes me want to figure out if I can incorporate Whirlwind into the deck, uh, because when that converts to Everlasting Grounds, that just protects your heroes from opponents. Um, so that might be a safer safer play, but you know, Whirlwind is a little bit harder to pull off because you have to play it in battle first. Um, but I don't know, maybe if I switch around the defense and play Brown, then I can get Reap the Whirlwind in, and Maybe there's something there. Maybe Shared Meal goes in the deck and then Whirlwind goes in reserve. Um, that's something. Uh, so I do end up playing Hope, searching for Joy, and in the meantime kind of seeing what other silver cards I can grab and just decide, yeah, Love is pretty much the, the one to go to. I could have gotten Fifth Seal because you know, I can search for uh, New Testament Enhancement, but I figured that Love was probably the one that I would end up searching for anyway. So uh, I go ahead and play Love, I convert my Mary to White, um, and then play Joy on Mary to make her cannot be negated. So, uh, or well, to make her cannot be negated when her ability reactivates, um, which um, you now I was kind of thinking could probably manage to do next turn if I'd you know, draw into first fruits or if I just kind of bank on him not having an evil character. Um, but even if he didn't, it probably wouldn't be worth it. It'd be better just to play Root of Jesse and give uh, Legion of Angels the cannot be negated protection at that point anyway. So um, I just passed the turn, crossing my fingers that uh, Brad draws some Lost Souls so that uh, I can at least play Son of God and get to three. And um, you know, if I do end up being able to block or uh, you know drawing into falling away or something, then um, seeing two Lost Souls was actually pretty sweet. Uh, because it kind of gave me hope that I would be able to maybe get another shot at one next turn as well. So he draws a Humble, and he draws a Hunter, and he exchanges with the Hunter for Wicked. Um, Wicked just gives the first evil enhancement when he plays each battle, it cannot be, uh, or regardless of protection. Uh, so it makes sense that that's the one that he would want to grab when I'm just kind of going in, in with the Voltron protected Legion of Angels. Um, and let's see, um, I think I was just looking at my defensive options here, like gold shield kind of being an option to equip instead of one of the other weapons, um, or just kind of like throwing something away to Jeremiah's toss. Um, the, yeah, the really like nasty part about Jeremiah in the throne deck, and I think why he fits so obnoxiously well <laughs> um, is because of throne, um, he gets to play first, and then because of Jeremiah, the any like negate or anything gets tossed. So with all of the um, um, basically, any of like OT purple enhancements that wipe out all evil characters in battle is going to be a battle winner, or like is going to be like not be interrupted um, pretty much all the time. Um, so, yeah, that kind of makes it very, uh, very hard to block. Um, so he comes out. Uh, I guess the the one thing about Jehu's sword is that you have to watch out for is that it. It's not optional, so if I don't have an evil human out, he would have had to discard one of his if he had one out, but um, 
no, I got rid of the merchants for him, so he didn't have to, to do that. Um, this time he goes Ishmael, David, Jehoshaphat, and then bans to Zadok, who allows him to activate a tabernacle artifact from uh, deck or reserve. No, I think it's just from reserve. Artifact pile or reserve? Shoot, I didn't see it. Um, either way, he activates his Aaron staff from his reserve, and uh, that only triggers when a tabernacle priest enters battle, so Zadok himself does not trigger it. Um, but Zadok can ban to a tabernacle priest or a green prophet, uh, so usually you can get it to trigger if you have a number of tabernacle priests out. I'm not entirely sure if Aaron's staff is a... I mean, it's not really a normal like throne inclusion, but I think Brad was just kind of trying out some uh, different combos and, and stuff, like, um, well, not really combos, but uh, like interactions um, or cards that might work well, um, and then Zadok bans to Jeremiah, so pretty much the same band, just with a, a little extra, a little, few, a few extra numbers in there. Uh, so I block with my King Resin, I go to Damascus, I've already got Captain of the Chariots, so I'm just kind of thinking, okay, like, what else can I do here? Um, you know, Naaman, uh, or King Resin just bans to a Syrian, so, you know, I could get Naaman out there, get my stuff cannot be negated, but King Resin makes banning capture abilities and evil cards cannot be negated, and I've got two capture enhancements, so it doesn't really matter if Naaman is in there. So I decided to go for Shobak, um, just because gives me gives me a few more numbers in battle, um, and then also some options for... Um, you know, I could just go to foreign horses instead of Naaman's chariot and horses. Um, you know, save the, the Naaman's for a different time when I only have gray or like I don't have Shobak in the battle. Um, so, uh, go to show or ban to Shobak, ban to Captain of the Chariots, and then I do go ahead and try to equip an evil weapon from reserve just to get the uh, toss out of the way. Um, but yeah, it doesn't actually, uh, doesn't actually get to use the ability because, say, a toss is just, um, now decreases an opposing character in battle by XX, where X is the strength of the discarded enhancement. Um, or the, yeah, the enhancement gets discarded instead of used normally, so. Go ahead and toss my foreign horses at his Ishmael. Um, wait, no. I guess I threw it at Jehoshaphat. Um, yeah, I figured, I mean, like, do it at one of the small guys and, you know, think that it would maybe be more you know, likely to, to get rid of one of them, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, and then it was at this point that he realized that, uh, he should have been looking at my hand with Jeremiah. Um... Which, you know, I'm sure with more practice with the deck he will, uh, he'd have that down. But he said it was, um, one of the first games he played with it. And, if not the first. I don't remember for sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, I think, playing a deck, uh, for a long time or for, you know, many games is kind of one of the you know, best ways to, um, be playing a good deck, like, I mean, I think, you know, uh, some players, you can, you know, hand them a musician deck or something that's, um, you know, maybe not, like, quite top tier, but it's what they know how to play, they've been playing musicians, you know, for, for a few years, um, and they'll do better than if you were to just hand them a throne deck. I mean, so, uh, I think that you know, knowing the interactions and stuff is definitely what makes um, some decks better. Uh, even or even if they're, you know, not strictly better in, in a vacuum, I guess. Um, so I was a little surprised here. Uh, he drew into his darkness, Lost Soul, and um, searched for Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, but it was the Prophecies of Christ Nebuchadnezzar, not the TXP one that is 
you know you're more likely to see um and then off of throne or that's throne is how he drew he got to draw one uh, because I only have engraveable characters, um, and then he played Royal Parade, and because I had to equip and then toss my interrupt, then I had nothing for that, and uh, my evil characters got bounced, but before I gave it the Lost Soul, I decided to play Son of Gods, so that I got to three, uh, and then uh, yeah, this was going in for his fifth, and then he still had Son of God in his hand, so that, um, or he was going in for his fourth, and he still had something out in his hand, so, um, that got him to five, um, so he ended up being me five three, but I did, uh, I was, you know, at least somewhat happy, I was able to get love and joy set up on Mary, um, and that was, I think, yeah, I mean, I only got two turns during this game, so, um, you know, sort of impressive, right? I think so. Um, it, it sort of worked out the way that wanted it to, and I think in, uh, you know, a game that's not being played against kind of a, the, the top tier theme, um, a more competitive deck, then uh, you'd, you'd probably have a, a little more time to get things set up and kind of have uh, some more fun with your, your Voltron Angels. Um, I guess, like, probably the, um, the, the main downside, I guess, about this deck is that you can pretty much just do the same thing with Esther, and all you have to do is equip her with, or is, is place Joy on her, and you get that protection from evil cards, um, cannot be negated, plus you're protecting lost souls, um, plus you're actually going in with Esther, and she's got plus seven, uh, strength, so she's a 10-3, protected from evil cards, protecting lost souls, and also the, you know, discarding if your opponent plays a card with negate the ability, or negated in the ability, um, yeah, all those are, are pretty good, and probably make that a little bit of a stronger strategy than this. Okay, maybe a lot more, just because it's a lot easier to set up and more consistent. I don't know, maybe I'll do that deck soon. Um, yeah, that'll be kind of fun. Uh, maybe maybe that will replace this one. I can try that one out for the tournament this weekend. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, anyways, that was the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I think maybe Brad just was upset that I... Uh, played my or took his second coming last week and had to to get out his revenge on me with this uh, this throne deck. Um, but you know, I'm I'm not not too mad at that. Uh, I do kind of like being able to feature um, the the top uh, you know meta decks like the the throne deck on the channel without really having to play it myself just because I. Know, don't like playing it quite as much. Uh, I kind of, you know, like doing more off random, uh, random kind of stuff that, you know, isn't gonna, isn't just designed to like stop my opponent right away. Um, uh, but I mean, we definitely do have some competitive games on the channel, so you know, don't uh, just give up on that. There, we just haven't had any in uh, a couple weeks here. Uh, since, you know, combo decks, this deck, contender decks, which are, you know, the you know, top tier competitive or whatever. Um, but I think probably next week or maybe uh, maybe two weeks, uh, we're going to have another contender deck coming out and we're going to be doing it on the channel as always. So um, that's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Stay tuned for that. Uh, as always, the deck list is in the description, but this time, I guess, I mean, I kind of announced it last week since last week was the first time um, we did that, but uh, from now on, the deck lists and a little bit of an extra write-up are going to be featured on Land of Redemption instead of on the boards, um, because, you know, it kind of just centers the... Um, 
sorry, the video ended. I'm still talking a little bit here. Uh, it, it centers or kind of focuses the, the content in one place if you um, want to kind of see uh, some more uh, things like on Land of Redemption with like the, a little extra description and so it might be a little easier to find by the topic than like on YouTube. Um, I mean you can definitely just check out my channel and um, get you know the the videos from there usually the the titles are matching what's going on but uh land of redemption i mean is is a great resource for all things redemption so uh, it's just another way to stay updated with my videos and also to kind of give uh land of redemption uh, more um traffic because they're i mean they're trying to um kind of pick it back up and get more content going through there so uh, definitely helps to support uh, that as well. So, yeah, if you guys liked the deck, let me know. Um, feel free to try it out and tweak it yourself if you really want to. Um, you know, I think that can definitely have a few fun games with this deck. Um, and probably need some tweaks, though, to be uh, consistent and you know, optimized. So... That's going to be it for this week. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and have a good one. Bye.